Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, we are starting the uh, day number two of this first week. Uh, we are going to wait a little um, for the other participants to enter the meeting. But we are going to start remembering some information that we learned yesterday. And then we are going to continue with the explanation of the topic that was the adverb. Uh, yesterday we were talking about adverbs and adjectives, and now we are going to end the information that we have about the adverbs, and we are going to talk about conjunctions. So the first part uh, of uh, the session um, will be about the adverbs, and the second part of the session um, we are going to talk about the conjunctions, and we are going to know what are the conjunction and how can we use uh, this uh, part of a speech uh, when we are talking in English. So we are going to start presenting uh, the document in which we have the information that we are uh, learning about the adjective. Um, and also we are going to end this part uh, learning about two more types of adverbs and then we are going to um, read some information about the uses of the adverbs. So we are going to present the screen because we need to see the information that we have about the adverbs. So let's see. Here in the screen we have the document in which we have the information about adverbs and we were talking about adverbs of place. And the thing that we were saying about uh, this kind of adverbs is that uh, we have some words that we can use when we have the object near to us or when we have a, or we want to describe the position of something, but we, we don't want uh, to mention in which place uh, are those things. Or in some cases, we don't want to say it, the specific location for the, the object. Now we are going to talk about the adverbs of manner. Uh, we are going to see the endings of this type of adverb. And then we are going to see adverb of frequency. And after that, we are going to see the uses of the adverb. So we are going to see what are the adverbs of manner. We have here adverbs of manner. I will move to the next page. So we have here that the adverb of manner denotes how an action is performed. And they often contain an adjective with an altered ending, such as ly, ely, or y. Tenemos los adverbios de manera o los adverbs of a manner. Uh, in this case, um, we are talking that uh, we have this kind of adverbs to describe or denote how an action is performed. Vamos a usarlos para eh, denotar o demostrar cómo una acción está eh, siendo llevada a cabo. Y tenemos en este caso adjetivos que terminan con los finales que ya hablábamos al día de ayer, que es el y y el y o simplemente con y yeah. en este caso es para demostrar cómo se está llevando a cabo o cómo se está haciendo lo que es la acción. I'm so sorry for that. I am having troubles with the connection in, in this uh, space that I uh, right now. I think it is not um, it is not having good reception. But let me see. Okay, we are going to continue. 
So let me move this one. So in this case, we are going to have the ending. Denote how an action is performed. And we have the ending. We have the first one, LY, LY, and Y. In this case, we're talking that we are going to use the endings of the adjectives, and we were um, learning that when we change the ending on the board, in that case, it is not an adjective. In this case, it's an adverb. When we change the ending of the word. And we have here some specification that we need to know about this kind of adjective that we're going to use with the ending. And we have the first one and it says, adjectives ending with a consonant turn into L-Y adverb. Los adjetivos que terminen con consonante se van a convertir en un adverbio que lleve l -Y al final. And in this case, we have this example. We have quick, that is an adjective, quick, and we are going to transform to an adverb adding L-Y. And, and in this case, it's not like, uh, we are going to write the word like this, quickly. This is the adverb in which we are going to transform the adjective, just adding L-Y. Y at the end. Then we have adjectives ending with a Y turn into E A Y adverb, and we have the example. Let's see. Adjectives ending in Y. So we have here the example and we have our adjective that is easy. That is the adjective easy. And we are going to transform that adjective into an adverb. Then we are going to have easily. And in this case, we are going to change that Y at the end like this, easily. Then adjective, with LE turn into adverse that replace the, this uh, vowel with a Y. And we have the example. We have credible. Credible, and we are going to transform that word into credibly. And the last one says most adjectives ending And we have the example that said tragic. And we are going to transform tragical. So 
In this case, um, remember that we were talking about that the adjectives can transform um, the meaning when we are adding at the ending. And in this case, we have the examples of um, how can we change that meaning when we are using uh, this kind of ending. So in that case, we have uh, four types of adjectives that are changing their meaning when they are um, adding the endings uh, at the end of the word. So in that case, um, we know that in English, we have a lot of uses for one uh, word, uh, depending on the context, depending on the time, depending on the action that we are performing, we can change the meaning of the word. So in this case, it's the same. We have the adjectives. Also, we can transform the adjectives into adverbs that can um, modify verbs, adverbs, phrases, and all of that thing. Así que tenemos palabras que nosotros la podemos conocer solo como adjetivos, pero que cambiándole los finales, agregándole unas cuantas letras al final, nos va a dar un resultado totalmente diferente, como lo son con los adverbios. Entonces, ahí vemos los, las cuatro formas, ¿verdad? En las que nosotros vamos a cambiar nuestro adjetivo para que se pueda convertir en un adverbio. Y más que todo, ¿verdad? Los, los finales tienen que ver con la Y. L, Y, I, L, Y. Los finales con I, C se convierten en A, L, L, Y. Y todo eso. Entonces, podemos transformar nuestros adjetivos en adverbios. And it says some adjectives do not change their spelling as, uh, spelling as adverbs. Um, ya teníamos también algunos que no cambian el, el spelling, no se les cambia la forma en la que se escriben, sino que más que todo es eh, el contexto en el que usamos la palabra. Then we have the, one of the most common uh, adverbs or group of adverbs that we use in English that are the adverb of frequency. Adverbs of frequency. I think this group is one of the most used because we can uh, create a lot of uh, sentences with this uh, adverb of frequency. And maybe you know what are these adverbs of frequency because they are very, very common and they are kind of easy to uh, understand. Um, and also uh, in, these, in this kind of adverbs, we have like, um, how can we say it? We have um, a degree. I hear someone, I don't know if, if someone has something to say or something to ask. If you have questions, remember, if you have questions, you can ask when you have uh, your uh, questions. Don't worry, you can uh, tell me, I have a question and you can ask what you want to know. So don't worry for that. If you have questions, you can ask in this moment, don't worry. So I was saying that in this case, we have the degree of uh, these adverbs. We have like a positive uh, ad adverb and uh, we are talking like, for example, when we are talking about always, the word always, que en español es siempre, la palabra siempre, eh, we can say that we are going to have a 100% of usage of that word, because we are talking about something that we are doing every day. So in that case, we have the degree of the adverbs in which we have like 100%, 0% of the word or the action that we are performing every day but in this case we're not going to see the degree just we are going to uh, just see the uh, adverbs that we are using in this uh, group so the advert of frequency explain how often an action occurs through definite or indefinite terms adverbs uh, of indefinite frequency express a bad rate of occurrence where adverbs of definite frequency are more specific. So in this case, we have two kinds of words, two kinds of adjet, uh, adverbs of a frequency. One is something that it is not like very specific, and the other one that is very, very specific of the time that we are doing our 
action. So in this case, we have indefinite frequency and definite frequency. Remember, the uh, definite the in, indefinite frequency is something that is not like very specific. We can use in all of the actions that we are performing. And the uh, definite frequency is more uh, specific. Tenemos dos tipos. Los eh, adverbios indefinidos son aquellos que nosotros utilizamos, pero que no son tan específicos, que puede llegar a tener un significado un poco vago del tiempo, pero que obviamente nos va a decir a nosotros que estamos haciendo algo en cierto momento. Y los adverbios de tiempo definido son aquellos que son mucho más específicos a la hora de que nosotros hablemos de las acciones. So, we are going to see the... Eh, the adverbs that we are going to use for each of these uh, categories. We have indefinite frequency. And we have definite frequency. In the indefinite, we have always, that is very common, frequently, Then we have generally, then we have never, again, or uh, another very, very common word, normally, we have often, seldom, sometimes, And usually. In this case, we don't have the whole uh, words that we are going to use for indefinite frequency. In this case, we have just some examples of these words. But in this case, we have like, we can divide these indefinite uh, words into two categories the positive connotation and the negative connotation. In this case, Give me a second. I will do something to uh, keep the the connection. So give me give me one moment. Okay, I don't know if this is going to work. We are going to see. Okay, so I was saying that we have the positive and negative connotation of these words, because in that case, we are talking about the frequency or the time in which we perform an action. So in that case, it's not like we are saying that we are creating negative sentences. In that case, it is saying that we don't do some action. En el caso de los eh, adverbios indefinidos, tenemos dos connotaciones, una positiva y una negativa. Eh, no se trata de que vamos a hacer oraciones positivas, negativas, como lo hacemos en el presente simple de uh, I, am, I am study, estoy estudiando, that is a, a positive sentence. And then we have the negative one, that is I am not studying es no estoy estudiando, no. En este caso, es la frecuencia con la que hacemos una acción. En este caso es positivo o negativo porque, eh, por ejemplo, always is a positive connotation because we do something uh, all the time, every day, for example. Entonces, no importa si es algo malo o algo negativo, pero nuestra connotación es positiva porque se hace todos los días. En cambio, con never, que es nunca, a pesar de que la acción sea positiva, por ejemplo, I never smoke, nunca fumo, but in that case, it's a negative connotation porque no se hace en ningún momento. 
es nada más la connotación de la palabra, no en sí, eh, si es una oración positiva o negativa. It's just the connotation of the word. So, and then we have some examples for definite frequency. And we have annually, that in this case is talking about the, uh, the uh, like a specific time in which we perform an action. So annually, that we can uh, say that in, in, in Spanish, we can say it annualmente. In this case, it's not like counting from January to December. In this case, we are talking about uh, from uh, maybe March to March. In that case, we are counting 12 months, but it is not like, uh, like in, in a specific order. Eh, en este caso, no vamos a decir eh, que es yearly, es una cosa cuando hablamos de año, porque contamos de enero a diciembre. En annually es anual y lo podemos contar de cualquiera de los meses. Si empezamos en febrero, contamos hasta febrero, marzo a marzo, abril a abril, no de enero a diciembre. En este caso es dependiendo del de ciclo que llevemos de, de tiempo. Luego tenemos a daily, in this case is uh, every day, daily, monthly, right? every month, weekly, every week, and also we have yearly, in this case it's from January to December. So in this case it's a more specific because we have a specific uh, time in which we perform an action. So, in that case, we have just the example for uh, these two categories. Now, the question, uh, the most important question or something that we need to know about the adverb is how to use adverbs in a sentence. We know that we have adverbs and they are talking about the space, they are talking about time, they are talking about the places and all of that things. But how can we use these adverbs in a sentence? How can we use these words when we are talking in English? So we are going to see the uses of the adverbs when we are creating sentences. So we have our question, how to use adverbs in a sentence? And we have the sentence placement of adverbs depends on the type of words they are modifying. Tenemos que los adverbios tienen un, um, una posición específica en la oración dependiendo de la palabra que modifique. No es que siempre van a estar en el mismo lugar, sino dependiendo de la palabra que estén modificando, así va a ser el lugar en el que lo vamos a escribir. So we are going to write the specification for that. The sentence depends on the type of word they modify. And we are going to see general rules and we have use number one it says use adverbs before adjectives and other adverbs adverbs before adjectives and other adverbs So in that case, we are going to write the adverbs before the adjective. That is the main topic that we have in this case. So it says adverbs precede the adjective or adverbs they modify. And we have some examples. We have example number one. And it says, we are experiencing
In this case, I'm going to mark this one that is the adverb. And I will take this up. Hot weather this year. So in this case, this word hot is the adjective. So we have that we are going to write first the adverb, then the adjective. En ese uso número uno, el uh, adverbio siempre va a ir antes que el adjetivo. En este caso tenemos el ejemplo, we are experiencing particularly hot weather this year. Estamos experimentando un eh, clima particularmente caliente este año. So in that case, we are going to write the adverb before the adjective. Then we have another one. Our parents renovated their home fairly recently. In this case, fairly, I mean, it's not like that. Fairly, and then recently. Yes. Recently. So in that case, we are not using an adjective. In that case, we are using an adverb. Our parents renovated their home fairly recently. Tenemos un ejemplo con adjetivo y un ejemplo con otro adverbio. Nuestros padres renovaron su casa recientemente. Podemos traducirlo de esa forma porque es como bastante reciente. So, in that case, we know that we are going to add the adverb before the adjective and other adverbs. Siempre va a ir antes del adjetivo y antes del adverbio. Now, we are going to see use number two. I mean, I don't need this one. Okay, use number two, and it says, use adverbs after the verb they modify. So in the first one, we see that we are going to write it. I think this is not, this is not a, a really good day, I mean, because I, I am having trouble right now, but no worries. We are going to continue. So in that case, we were seeing that uh, in the first one, we are going to write the adverb at the beginning in the first place, and then we are going to write the adverb and the adjective. And in this case, when we are talking about the verb, we are going to uh, write first the verb, and then we are going to write the adverb. So in that case, we are going to change the, um, the place in which we are going to write the adverb. So, it says adverbs come after the auxiliary verb. For example, be, have, may, must, etc. And verbs they modify. And we have here the auxiliary verbs that can be these ones. We have, may, must, and verbs they modify. So in this case, we're going to write the adverbs um, after the auxiliary verbs and the verbs. And we have the examples.
Okay, we have here. We are too busy. We are too busy. In this case, we have here the adverb. We have the first one that is the verb to be, in this case is the auxiliary, and then we have Basi that is the verb that we are uh, using in this case. Then I am quickly learning that Hemingway was a fascinating, was a fascinating writer. I am quickly, in this case, we have here the adverb, Learning that Hemingway was a fascinating. Writing. So I am quickly learning that Hemingway was a, was a fascinating writer. Then we have, I am writing too quickly. I am writing too quickly. And we have here the adverb. In this case, we are going to have like this one. Then we have another example. And it says, the baby smile sweetly. The baby smile sweetly. And we have here the adverb at the end. And the last one we have. She's going to be very upset about it. This. She's going to be very upset. about this. So we have here, very, that is the answer. Now we are going to see the use number three. And it says, use focusing adverbs before verbs. In this case, vamos a utilizar a focusing adverbs que van a ir antes del verbo. En este caso sí van a ir antes, pero no es eh, los mismos adverbs que ya estamos viendo, sino que son eh, ad adverbs that are eh, specifically for that uh, place. And it says, focusing verbs appear before verbs to emphasize the manner of an action. Estos son verbos que aparecen, ¿verdad? Eh, antes de los verbos que nosotros estamos utilizando, las acciones que estamos utilizando para hacer énfasis de la manera de una acción. So in that case, we have examples. And we have example number one. He only wrote one text. He only wrote one check. And we have that only is the adverb. Then we have, she always loves to dance. She always loves to dance. And we have here always. Then we have, we simply walk to the park. We simply walk 
to the part. Simply, in this case, is the adverb. And then the last one. I certainly wanted to come, but I had to work. Okay, in this case, this one is the answer. So we have the last, the last use of the adverb. We have use number four. And it says use evaluative viewpoints and linking adverbs outside the clause. Remember that the clause are two sentences that we are using together to have a strong meaning. Uh, those sentences can function as a separate sentence, but in that case, when we have it together, are better. Las cláusulas son aquellas eh, oraciones en las que tenemos dos partes, que si las separamos, en muchos de los casos eh, pueden tener significado ¿verdad? Las, las oraciones separadas, pero eh, son mejores estando unidas. Y existen maneras de unir esas, esas clauses. In this case, we are not going to talk about the clauses. We are just going to talk about the adverbs that we can use to those kind of sentences. Few points. And linking adverb outside the clause. So in this case, evaluative viewpoint and linking adverbs appear outside of a sentence clause to modify a whole clause of the sentence. They are outside of the sentence and they try to modify the whole meaning of the sentence. So we are going to see some examples to end the uses of the um, the adverb. In this case, we are going to see the first example that is an evaluative adverb. And we have the example and it says, in this case, to use an evaluative adverb, make sure it appears before the main verb and it's separated by commas. In este caso, cuando vamos a utilizar adverbios evaluativos, tenemos que fijarnos que aparezca antes del de verbo principal de la oración y que esté separado por una coma. So we have the example. The assignment, comma, I mean, Does not include instruction. So in this case, this one is the adverb and they are separated by commas. So in that case, it's in the middle of the sentence. The film will Conductor Lee win it to our Okay, in this case, again, in the middle of the sentence. In the first one, we can say, la tarea sorpresivamente no incluía instrucciones. And in the second one, el 
eh, o la película, eh, definitivamente, sin dudarlo, ¿verdad? Iba a ganar o va a ganar dos premios. Es sin duda, ¿verdad? Sin dudarlo. Then we have the example for the viewpoint adverb. And it says that the viewpoint adverbs occur before or after the sentence. Esto se ocurre antes o después de la oración. Y tenemos el ejemplo. Actually, the instructions are on a separate document. So in this case, we have actually that is outside the sentence. Because in that case, the sentence is the instructions are on a separate document. But in this case, we are using actually because we are going to um, make an emphasis on that situation. And then we have the second one, and that is says personally. I am surprised. The film was nominated for any award. So in the case, in, we have here this word outside the sentence that is uh, the adverb. That's like when we're talking in Spanish and we say, mm. Personalmente, yo no creía que la, que la película iba a llegar a ese punto. O en realidad, ¿verdad? Las instrucciones venían en una página aparte. Those kind of uh, sentence or uh, words that we can use to make an emphasis, to um, clarify something or to give our opinion uh, are outside the main sentence and we are using and they are adverbs. And then the last part, because we are going to end the advert, the topic of the adverbs because we are going to see the conjunctions. We have the linking adverbs, that is the number three. And it says the linking adverbs like however or likewise connect two sentences, while adverbs like that connect to en este caso, algunos eh, adverbios como however está uniendo, en este caso, o conecta dos oraciones, pero la palabra but, que en español es pero, está conectando dos cláusulas. Son diferentes, pero se utilizan para conectar. Una conecta oraciones, la otra conecta cláusulas. Y tenemos un ejemplo de oración y un ejemplo de cláusula. En the first one, Boston So we have the sentence, Boston held its mayoral election in November 2020. However, the results have remained unpopular. In this case, this one is the ad adverb that is connecting two sentences. Boston eh, llevó a cabo su elección para alcalde en noviembre del 2020, pero los resultados se quedaron, ¿verdad?, de manera impopular o que no eran populares. En that case, so in that case, we are 
uh, connecting two sentences. And then we have these two clauses. That it says, it's almost the same, but in this case, I'm going to copy this first part. But in this case, I'm going to write comma, but the result have remained unpopular. So in this case, we are not going to write a period. In this case, we are going to write a comma and write the word but. So in that case, we have just a little information about the adverbs. We know that we have a lot of information about the adverb, the uses, and all of those things. But in this case, we are going to change from adverb to conjunction. Ya hablamos de los adverbios, cómo podemos utilizar los, los adverbios, cómo crear adverbios a partir de los adjetivos y algunos de los usos que podemos darle a estos adverbios. Ahora, we need to change the topic and we need to know what are conjunctions. Vamos a hablar de las conjunciones. ¿Qué son las conjunciones y cómo las podemos utilizar? So, in this case, we are going to have the topic Conjunction. In this case, we can say that we are talking about uh, topics related to grammar. So in this case, we are like very, very, hmm, we can say serious uh, topics because we are talking about uh, the structure and how to use uh, this kind of words to connect the sentence that we are creating. Um, to give like uh, emphasize or the phrases that we are saying or explaining. So in this case, there are kind of a uh, very serious uh, topics that we are seeing right now. So the question is, what is the conjunction? Someone uh, know what is a conjunction or have you ever uh, listened that word, conjunction? No, never? Okay, we are going to know what is a conjunction right now. So. We know that a conjunction is a part of a speech. We know that we have um, some categories of words uh, in English that uh, form part of the, uh, the parts of the speech. We have the verbs, we have the adverbs, we have the adjectives, and in this case, we have the conjunction. So in this case, conjunctions are used to connect words, phrases, process, or sentences. So a conjunction is a part of a speech that is used to connect words, phrases, process, or sentences. Conjunctions are considered to be invariable grammar particle, and they may or may not stand between items they conjoin. Así que básicamente o de la manera simple, las conjunciones son una parte de el speech que nosotros conocemos para el speech que se usa para conectar palabras, frases cláusulas u oración. Entonces, básicamente es para unir eh, este tipo de palabras o frases. We have different types of conjunction, and it says there are several different types of conjunctions that do various jobs between sentence structures. We have different types. And we have tab number one. 
and there are subordinating conjunctions. Subordinating. And it says that these subordinating conjunctions are also known as subordinators. These conjunctions join dependent clauses to independent clauses. In this case, they are connecting this kind of clauses. Then we have the second type that are coordinating conjunctions. In this case, there are also known as coordinators. These conjunctions coordinate or join two or more sentences, main clauses, words, or other parts of a speech, which are of the same syntactic importance. Then we have number three, there are correlative conjunctions. Number four, conjuncting adverbs. Conjunctive. I'm going to write just the list of the types and then we're going to see some examples, don't worry. I mean, this is the number four. So in the correlative conjunction, it says that these conjunctions Correlate working in pairs to join phrases of words that carry equal importance within a sentence. And the conjuncting adverbs, while some instructors uh, do not teach conjuncting adverbs, I will say conjunctions. This important part of a speech are words I mentioned. Um, and these adverbs always connect one clause to another. And are used to show sequence, contrast, house in effect and other relationships. Entonces tenemos cuatro tipos de conjunciones, la subordinating, coordinating, correlative and conjunctive adverbs. La primera, subordinating, es más que todo para unir cláusulas dependientes con cláusulas independientes. La segunda, coordinating conjunction, es para unir dos o más oraciones, cláusulas eh, principales, palabras y otras eh, partes del de speech. Lo vamos a dejar como part of speech. Que tienen en la misma importancia sintáctica. Then, correlative conjunction eh, son las que trabajan en, en pares para unir frases o palabras que tengan la misma importancia en la oración. Y los adverbios que casi nunca se utilizan, los conjuncting adverbs, pero que se utilizan para mostrar secuencia, contraste, causa y efecto, y otro tipo de relación. When people first learn to write, they usually begin with short basic sentences like this. My name is Sarah. I am a boy. I like dogs. We are going to write the example. It says, when we start writing, we write short sentences. Cuando empezamos a escribir independientemente del idioma, utilizamos frases cortas, como este ejemplo. My name is, is Ted. Period. I am a boy. Period. I like dogs. In that case, we can see three different sentences. The most different orations. My name is Ted is one. I am a boy, second. And I like dogs, the number three. One of the most important jobs of conjunction is to connect these short sentences So they sound more like this. Las conjunciones nos van a ayudar a que esas tres oraciones que están separadas suenen como una sola idea. Y podemos ver el ejemplo acá. I am a boy named 
head, comma, and I lie down. In that case, we have just one sentence saying the same information. I am a boy named Ted and I like dogs. So, what are the rules for the conjunctions? There are few important rules for using conjunctions and um, it will help you when you are writing your sentences. The conjunctions are for connecting past action and idea as well as the noun eh, closes another part of a speech nos va a ayudar a conectar ideas acciones pensamientos así como nombres cláusulas y otras partes de lo que es el speech o lo que nosotros utilizamos para hablar so we are going to write here rules and we are going to write the number one Conjunctions are for connecting the actions and ideas as well as nouns, process. And other part of the speech. And we have an example. And it says Mary went to the supermarket and bought orange. And Oranges. So in this case, this one and is the conjunction because they are, or in this case, it is a joining the two sentences. Mari fue al supermercado y, ahí nos une, y compro naranja. Nos está uniendo dos oraciones o dos cláusulas, como queramos verlas. Y esta es la que nos une para que nos quede una sola oración y no vayamos eh, haciendo oraciones pequeñitas, así como la de My Name is Sarah, de Amaboy, like that. That case, Mary went to the supermarket and bought oranges. So, in that case, it's joining two uh, parts of the same idea because it's doing the same action in the sentence. So tomorrow we are going to end the part of the conjunctions and when we are going to see more information about the conjunction and more examples about that. And also we are going to see the list of conjunctions. You are going to know what words are part of the conjunction. Mañana vamos a ver una lista de palabras que utilizamos como, con, eh, como conjunciones para unir las oraciones. So we are going to end the session here because it's time to end them. And we are going to see each other tomorrow. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow in the session number three. Thanks. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Night. See you tomorrow night. Tomorrow. Good night. Tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. See you tomorrow.